All right, so look, y'all, y'all getting my LinkedIn profile <laughs> analyzed by uh, Microsoft Recruiter. And I'd like to also tell you guys, uh, don't follow what I do on my page because I do so many different things. That's the reason why my headings look like this. If I just was a job searcher, it wouldn't be like this. It would be more concise and streamlined to what I want to do. Mm. Yeah, don't follow mine either. <laughs> uh, so first thing i'm looking at i'm looking at an, an appealing um something that is attracting me to the profile is the picture a nice smile and then you have a decent background that's something very unique it tells about yourself and what you do personally we love that um for someone that is a job seeker um, the difference that you would see on the headline or the heading is that you will have the title of the positions that you're looking for, that you're looking to get into, right? Just the titles and maybe the little, um, the slashes, but I think it's important. And I see this a lot when I'm talking to different clients and candidates, mm -hmm. we have to narrow it down. You cannot have everything. I know you, sometimes you may have a resume for Program management. You may have a resume for cybersecurity. You may have a resume for recruiting. When we're on LinkedIn, we have to, if we're going to pick two, it's got to be something similar around each other, or we have mm -hmm. to try to focus on one because it's going to look just like a lot and it's going to be hard to pull skills from your project management experience from uh, other jobs that you had and put them into the descriptions underneath each job. Um, so yes, I would say come up with something very creative. One thing that I was taught um, is something that is going to appeal a recruiter is, is going to be the headlines. The first thing I'm going to see. So your title, maybe something creative um, or um, something that you do on the side or in your free time. Right. And I'll give these people uh, some context because they can't see everything because it's me looking at my profile. But what that pencil is on my banner actually says NIR. Technically, I can just move that so it'll just be lined up. But anyways, you're right. So when I wanted to pivot out of the, the last kind of roles I did, I wanted to only get kind of approached for incident response or security operations lead or like level three roles. So that's why SOC lead is the very first uh, thing in the heading and that's why most time I got reached out for roles like that because I've had that in my profile and that's also what my profile shows what do y'all think about people that have like a lot of um, connections does it matter to y'all you mean followers or connections so if you have your profile on a creative profile and you have a lot of followers I mean I think that's absolutely good because there's people that are following you that is willing to like look at your content that you're you're posting or the things that you're posting or some mm -hmm. of the things that you comment on so that's really good i don't think that that's a bad thing and it also just makes your network uh, makes you more marketable because we have layoffs all the time and so you need yeah. to have a good network but make sure you're you know speaking with your network as well sending a message asking how they're doing um telling them happy birthday i tell everybody happy birthday and then those usually spark conversations from there as well yeah definitely oh i love this part this is my favorite part so if y'all get a chance go look at my features because my features is fire from all the posts <laughs> i usually put yeah. my viral posts in the features area but a lot of things that you've worked on or if you were um, on a panel of some sort um i have in there when i got my hr management certification like those are really good things to put in your features. Um, brag about yourself. I think that's what LinkedIn is for. Hey, you got to. I love me some me. Yeah, I actually got to change some of mine because the one from last week, I need to put up there. It's a couple of them actually I need to put on here for the future. Yeah. The I, I kept this up here for real because mm -hmm. um, uh, whoever that was, I was actually about SOC analysts. Like I direct people to this all the time. Like this, these questions I have for people that like some realistic scenarios that they will see in an interview because that's the hardest part. So, hey, man, how do I prepare for this stuff? Because I went in there for one thing and uh, it was something else. So a lot of times when I'm reviewing uh, people's LinkedIn's, I'll go see, okay, their activity. And, uh, you know, sometimes I say, oh, they haven't posted in a while. Mm -hmm. So I'll give them some homework. Say, hey, let's try for like a post maybe a week or something. Just trying to build the muscle up of them posting. Mm -hmm. And then we'll say, okay, we'll go like for, 
you know, whatever. Like, so do you review, do you view like their post or do you just keep on scrolling down to their experience and whatever else? Mm -mm. No, usually I don't review the post. Okay. Um, this is actually, I got to change this, but because it's kind of out of date. Yeah. But what I would typically put right here, if I want to is I can put my career achievements that I have right there. Or I can make it a, a section like on my resume. I don't have a, a summary. It just has my name and stuff, career achievements and technical skills. Then it goes down into like, you know, my roles I've had mm -hmm. upheld. Uh, I think uh, mine has like what I recruit for. Also the about section, if you're looking, like if you're trying to find a recruiter for a role, their about section most likely will have like what they're recruiting for and yep. you know, what cities they're looking for and things like that. Glad you said that too. Cause when I show people to kind of find recruiters now, I say, Hey, go visit their page first and see if they recruit for what uh, they're supposed to be recruiting to versus, you know, you just send them a cold email. Now mm -hmm. I do that if I just can't find anybody. I also look for right. recruiters that are possibly smiling in their pictures that they mm -hmm. might be nice. Now this hasn't been updated in a long time. I'm about time, to say, right? cause I don't see no, uh, I need at least three bullet points underneath each one. Yeah. Like this stuff is like, <laughs> oh, this stuff is from probably like five years ago. Like I hadn't put this okay. stuff on here. So if I want, like, this is not what, what's on my resume currently. Mm-hmm. So, um, guys, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> like, for example, this job, this job is not my resume. I'm, I'm only been going back like five years because it's like my, I'm, my yeah. experience is getting so extensive now. I don't want it to be longer than it has to be. Yeah, right. Uh, you think don't it want stops it. With this company. One or two pages. That's it. But I got this, my schooling. Then I get into that. Then I get into like the skills portion. This is where I always tell people too. I say, hey, y'all want to do this job, but the skills that's on the job description ain't listed over here. Mm -hmm. And so I have some of them and I actually need to come back through and probably add some. And but also this part is really important too, because as we're looking on our side of LinkedIn, we put in these keywords. And mm -hmm. if you have this on your profile, then you pop up. Yep. So this actually going to make me redo my, my thing. And okay. So let's talk about this, right? Okay. I don't know now for the recruiter standpoint, it might be uh, different, but maybe for me, if I was a hiring manager or hiring somebody, I would go because back in the day, people used to have on their resume references available upon request. Where with LinkedIn, like you said, with it really actually being better than a resume because digital resume, I'd say, hmm, does this person got any you know recommendations and who do they come from? And you look at their title. So like this is my old manager who's the director now of my old company. I got Dayspring, and you're looking at where they work at. Uh, let's see some other ones I got. But the fact is, these are accurate descriptions of me when people work with me or they either manage me. I try to tell people don't sleep on recommendations. You just no, you not at all, up. not at all. Especially if you have somebody, a uh, manager, supervisor that you have a good relationship with, and they're on LinkedIn. I mm -hmm. think they definitely think that you should ask for a recommendation if they're willing to send one. It, it does nothing but advance the profile. Um, if you're in plus, if you're going to be asking somebody for a recommendation, usually you had a good relationship with them anyway. So.